Actually, I've been wanting to drive since I was about six years old. The first time I crawled into a truck, it was a 1975 cab over Pete. And my mother was the truck driver that boosted me up into it. And I was sitting in the sleeper berth and sleeping back or sitting back in the bunk and I was like, I want to become a truck driver. <laughs> my mother became a truck driver in the 70s, in the mid 70s. And in that, at that time, women, women weren't. And then, of course, I married a truck driver. Both my parents were truck drivers. <laughs> Both my grandparents on either side were truck drivers. Her, her, so. His dad and her dad, they teamed a lot. So we already had an idea of where we were gonna go. One of the reasons why she waited so long yes. to become a truck driver, because my grandmother, when she was just gone all the time, and my mom was with babysitters most of the time, and she didn't wanna do that to us. We already had an idea. We had a bedrock foundation of, you know, this is what the industry is about. I decided not to become a truck driver until my daughters were older. I joined the traveling carnival that my older two worked for, and I worked because I wanted to make sure I could handle the lifestyle, because I had been that homebody. I'd been at home for 10 years doing the same job, day in, day out. I hated my job, so got my CDL, joined with Knight. Ta-da! Here I am. <laughs> She's been driving five years, I've been driving four and a half. That half a year makes a world of difference in case if you were wondering. It does, because in the competition of life, I win. I just, it was so, I was burning out so hard. And mom, she was like, well, I'm going to get my CDL license. She's like, we could team together and we could both make more money. And I was like, well, so I thought about it. I was like, you go first. So they supported, my girls supported me while I went to school. And then when I got out of school, I was helping support them more. Driving with my daughter. <laughs> it was atrocious. <laughs> my feet stink. Having her come into the truck with me after being solo there for a little bit for myself, it, we were co-workers at certain points of the day, then we were mother-daughter interactions, so we, we knew how to separate that. So we'd allow ourselves to be mad, but we never stayed mad inside the truck. If it got bad enough, we'd take it outside of the truck. And if we needed a super break, like, like, come on, we're just burning out on this. Give us a day. Our dispatcher would always do that. They'd be like, okay, 34 hour reset. Which was actually one of the best things about Knight is the fact that they were the only company that said that if she wanted more home time than I wanted, she was allowed her home time and I could solo the truck out. So I got to keep in contact with why I love this industry and she got to be at home with her daughter. I have a dog. He is a husky. He is a Siberian and Malamute mix. And I got him from the pound about a year and a half ago. Having him on the truck with me, even though it's a smaller space, he gets more interaction and more exercise than he would if I lived in a city and worked a nine to five and lived in an apartment. So being a trainer, sitting in that seat, you know, after I know that my trainee's good with the driving and handling and stuff like that on the long stretches, I'll break out my sewing. Um, I do, I have a project that I've been working on for a couple of years. It's a quilt for my oldest granddaughter. I also do operation caps. There's a lot of women out there who, there's a waiting list. There are so many women who want to get into it and see if they can do it. But we lack trainers because too many don't want to share their truck. So women drivers in general then is like 6%. The less people there are to train and help these women figure out if they want to be a truck driver, the less drivers we're gonna have. So, I mean, I does so much for me already, why not?